The United Nations initiative for the Syrian peace talks is underway in Geneva. The UN has urged world powers to push for a ceasefire, even as government forces backed by Russian airstrikes launched the biggest offensive north of Aleppo in a year. Now, the main Syrian opposition group at peace talks in Geneva has accused Russia of endangering the talks due to its bombing campaign in the country. In a recent interview with VOA's Senate correspondent Michael Bowman, Republican Senator Bob Cocker of Tennessee and the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee spoke on a wide range of issues, including the Syrian Peace Initiative. I think it's starting off in a place that is going to make it very difficult to lead to that kind of uh, place. I, I certainly support diplomatic talks, as I think everyone would. But the elements at present do not feel like they're in their proper, uh, proper place. And what's been happening, as you know, <clears throat> is the facts on the ground have been changing. You have Russia that has intervened and certainly uh, the Assad regime, because of their support and Iranian support, have been making gains and so pushing back against the Syrians. And as you change the facts on the ground, in the way that they've been changed, it makes it very difficult uh, to get to a place that looks satisfactory at present. Do you envision President Assad ever leaving voluntarily? I, uh, I at, at present, again, as he sees that he's making gains and as none of the things that the UN Security Council uh, resolution stated have occurred, in other words, he's taken none of those state uh, steps, he hasn't quit uh, barrel bombing his own citizens, he hasn't dealt with the humanitarian peace. Uh, he isn't dealing with this very low-level request. You would think that could easily be met. He's, uh, you know, the facts on the ground are moving in his direction, so it seems to me that he's not yet, uh, the context is not there yet for him to do that. Now, your committee last week approved uh, sanctions, tougher sanctions uh, targeting North Korea's nuclear program, and in particular entities that help Pyongyang supply and finance its military complex. Would it be fair to assume that some of those entities might be Chinese, and yeah. could some complications arise from that? Yeah, I don't think there's any question uh, that some of those entities are Chinese. We've been uh, talking with our ambassador to the UN and the administration relative to efforts that they are trying to make through, the, again, the UN Security Council to get China to join in. I know that those have progressed from the beginning in a very slow way. China's responded uh, in, not, in not a satisfactory way, as I understand it. And so, yes, Congress is moving on. Uh, it's my sense that the UN Security Council discussions are probably, uh, they're not going to make the progress that we would all like. And so, yes, some of those entities will be Chinese entities. And, you know, it's a shame. The, 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 the country that could really push back against what North Korea is doing is China. Uh, as you know, they're always focused on stability and don't want to rock the boat. But uh, I think these sanctions may change that and, and uh, hopefully cause them to respond in a different way. Uh, for the United States, North Korea is a problem on the other side of the world's biggest ocean. But right. for its neighbors, North Korea is right on their doorstep. That's right. As you pondered sanctions, was there consideration of the law of unintended consequences? Uh, I mean, this is not a regime that is, that is commonly described as particularly stable or right. rational. Yeah. Well, look, I'm very familiar with the fact that we have 28,500 troops right there. Uh, I visited there recently. Um, I'm very aware that Seoul is within artillery range of what the North Koreans have. I'm very familiar with the fact that, uh, you know, China, again, uh, wishes beyond for anything. The greatest wish for China is stability, but I, I would actually say that what you've got is the unintended consequences of doing nothing.